Another day, another ultralight Shimano Sensolite 5'6 ultralight rod, my friends. I see a bunch of bluegill and bass, and I am about ready to catch them. Get it out there. There's a bass coming in on it. He's got it. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is going to be too easy. I'm seeing fish left and right. Nice warm day. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not going to tell you it's a big fish, but it's a fish. And we just started fishing about 40 seconds ago. Got some funny color on him. There we go. I'm just using a 164th ounce mule jig and a mule minnow 1.2. And we are just going to flip this thing around the shallows and see what wants to eat it. I'm seeing some bluegill around. Got him. Another bass. There's a bunch of dinky bass right here. And I'm all about that life. You can see that rod right there. This is a five foot six model, as I said, and it is uh, certainly a fast action. And I like that. You know, I actually work today. I've got maybe 30 or 40 minutes to fish. So I'm not like super focused on talking and doing an intro and all that. I'm just getting right to business. Shimano Sensolite, little dinky bass. I love it. I will talk about this rod at some point, but for now, I just want to catch some daggum fish and there's plenty to be caught right now. In fact, that took no time. That's a nice gill. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, I like what I see. I like what I see. I'll cheers to that. I will cheers to that. It is a Friday evening and I will cheers to that. You know why? Because I got a little, little ditty in my back pocket right now. Boom shakalaka. We got bluegills, we got beers, we got good times. Cowpoke, bluegill. Miller Light. Cheers to the weekend. It's a body of water that uh, I have not been able to fish before, but now, oh my gosh, I just saw a big fish. That's a big fish. I don't even know what that was. I just let him. I have no idea what that was, but if he is big and hungry for a peanut, I just put a tiny mule minnow in front of him. Here, let's talk about the specs real quick. So like I said, this is a five foot six rod. It's rated for line two to six pounds. Lure weight 132nd to 316th, power ultralight fast action. Very, very common, very, very similar to a lot of the rods I've talked about. This rod retailed for $49.99, I think. Oh, I just had a bite. Um, it's like a $50 rod. Oh yeah. What we got here, another gill? Yes, sir. Golly, there's a ton of fish in this corner. Another little gill right there. They're nice and fat though, look at that. He's been eaten up. See you girl. Yep. It is like automatic in here. This is honestly cheating. Now, are any of the fish big? No, but it is automatic right now. And I love it. I love every bit of it. There's a gill. No, that's a perch. That's a perch right there. Gotta love me some yellow perch. So I'm just fishing with my Daiwa Revros. It's got the six pound J braid on it and then a four pound monofilament leader. Like I said, I'm throwing a 164th ounce mule jig in a fire red color with the uh, 1.2 mule minnow. So this is true, true ultralight gear. I'm not casting it super, super far, but it's far enough just around the shallows casting it out there maybe like 20 or 30 feet and it's just enough to kind of catch some of these fish there's a bass i'm gonna sight fish that guy there's two of them oh he ate it right away he just smoked it i dropped it right in front of his face and he just smoked it and this other bass was chasing him but i just totally ditched that fish oh well oh <laughs> <laughs> These fish are ridiculous. I literally missed this fish. I dropped my jig back down and one came back and smoked it. Oh gosh, that was probably my least graceful release of my life. As far as the reel seat and the rod butt goes, I really like it. It's got a cork handle, but then it's kind of the, uh, the foam butt. Um, split grip, obviously. Um, really simple, you know, reel seat for the most part, but it screws down and it's nice and tight. Um, the foam right here is nice and comfortable. 
Um, all in all, I really, really like this real seat. For $50, this is as good as you can ask for. The other thing is, from a balance standpoint, I would say it's totally neutrally balanced. If anything, it's slightly butt heavy. So obviously I like that. I've talked a lot about balance in my day. Um, so as far as balance goes, aesthetics goes, for $50, I honestly think this is pretty darn hard to beat. There's a fish, yellow perch. I'll take it. I will take it. Not a very big one, but pretty little fish. All right, nice little multi-species day. Here we go. Got him. <laughs> What's that? Is that a nice bluegill? Yes, sir, it is. A lot of bluegill about this size in here. They're not dink dinks, but they're certainly not big ones either. So, promising. A little five, eh, probably about a six incher. And they're fat though. That's the one nice thing about the gills that I've caught in here so far is they're really girthy. They're clearly eating something. So I believe the Shimano Sensolite spinning rod is available in four models, two of which are ultralights, two of which are lights. I believe the 5.6 and the 6.6 are the only options from an ultralight standpoint. If I would have had the option, I probably would have chose the 6 foot 6 because the 5 foot 6 is great and all, but um, I would have liked to have just a little bit more length to my rod to where I could cast it out there just a little bit further. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love just watching my braid tick and then just slamming back the hook. And there you have it. Pretty little yellow perch. Good times. So by now you've clearly seen that I've put a lot of flex in the Shimano Sensolite so far, and if it's not easy to tell, I obviously really like this rod. The fact that it's only $50 is extremely impressive. I would have to say that this is honestly probably my favorite $50 ultralight that I've tried so far. I am gonna tell you about all my thoughts at the end of this video, but I wanted to just keep catching some fish, and I actually figured I better try experimenting with a treble hooked bait, because this rod is extremely fast. It's probably the fastest ultralight that I've found for the $50 price point. You know, I, I obviously have reviewed the 13 Fishing Defy Silver in the past, and that rod is really fast as well, but I actually think this Sensolite is even faster. It's got a pretty stout tip to it, and I really, really like that for jig fishing, but I don't think it's going to be quite as good for treble hooked baits, and I'll talk about that while I start fishing. I don't know if they'll eat this thing or not, but I figured I could cast it around a little bit. Anyways, like I said, I will share all of my opinions at the end of this video, but for now, let's see if we can catch a couple more fish. Let's go. So I'm seeing a ton of little microscopic bluegill in the shallows, but they're probably not going to be able to get their mouth around this treble hook so my best bet is if i can find some small bass you know if they eat this thing the question is is this rod going to be too dang fast and is it going to pull the hook out before i get a chance to actually set the hook on the fish you know that's really the main thing with treble hook baits a lot of times you like just a little bit softer rod to where you're not pulling that hook right out but like i said this rod is extremely fast i mean it honestly does not bend down the blank near as much as i would have suspected so i really 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 like that for jig fishing like i said but you know, stuff like inline spinners, stuff like little snap bean crankbaits, stuff like little jerk baits. That's not necessarily ideal. I've had a lot of success on this little crankbait in the past, but it can be kind of hit or miss. Little ultralight hard baits can sometimes work really well. Sometimes they really just don't do a whole lot of damage. Today we've got a little bit of cloud cover, but we don't have much wind, so I'm probably better off with a jig. But I want to try this anyways, just to see. Oh, oh, there we go. That's what I was hoping for. Hey, you know what? That did just fine. That did just fine. Little juvenile bass. All right, buddy. I was not suspecting him. All of a sudden, he just shot out of the weeds. Okay, chill out. I really don't want a finger stuck in that hook. Okay, there we go. Okay, well, yeah. Sorry, buddy. No, he's fine. He swam off. Um, anyways, you know, that actually worked just fine. No issues. Oh, what just happened? Oh, Daggummit. I've got good news and bad news. For some reason, I just snapped my entire leader off. I don't know how. Um, obviously, there was a kink in my line or something. So that's the bad news. The good news is um, I hooked into the bass and he jumped and he shook the little snap bean out of his mouth. So he's not swimming around with a lure in his face. So that's good. Unfortunately, my snap bean is gone though. It's underwater somewhere and I don't see where it's at. I wonder, you know what? I might just, fortunately I'm wearing my uh, sandals. Let's see if I can try to find it. 
Hey -o. Well, got it back. Sweet. And I got all my leader line back. You know, that works. I had to chop a bunch of my leader off because I felt a ton of frays in it. I'm not sure what that was from. I must have uh, had my line get kinked on something, but we've got a really, really short leader now, and that's okay. I don't think I need a really long one. Also, this reel was the one I used in the salt water, and I tried to rinse it real good and give it a good cleaning. And uh, it's definitely got a little grindy sound to it, so something tells me um, it may not last forever now that I've got it out in the salt. As much as I would love to keep testing the Sensolite with a treble hooked bait, the reality is this rod is probably not going to be the best choice if you're going to throw a lot of treble hooked baits. The fish are showing very, very little interest in the snap bean. I just saw a decent bass. I ran it right by his face a couple times. He had zero interest. I'm going to go ahead and rig up a 180th ounce mule jig and I'm going to focus on bluegill. Several of you asked me about this box. This is a Spro double sided terminal tackle box. I actually like it quite a bit. You know, it works pretty well for mule jigs. So I wanted to test it out and uh, I'm liking it. Except for that, I just shot two jigs out of my box. Fortunately, they did not land in the water. I'm gonna do this 180th fire red so I can see it. Fire red 180th ounce mule jig with a black horsefly. Oh yeah, instant love from the blue gills. What did I say? There's a bunch of dinky gills. This one's either a pumpkin seed or a bluegill hybrid. He is feisty. Too easy. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm getting a hook set into these fish. There's so many little ones like this size. I think these might be hybrids. They might be bluegill pumpkin seed hybrids. They're really freaking small and they like to shake. Got him. There's all sorts of these guys in here, man. Ridiculous. That little 180th ounce mule jig, such a small hook. So it works well for these little guys. So if you just want to catch some fish, I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. All right, well, I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for bass. I'm gonna keep moving a little bit here. Any bass around here? How about that bluegill right there? Come on, eat it. Got him, yep. There you go, kind of a pretty fish. See you, bud. When a fish like this is one of your biggest bluegill, that's saying something, I'm telling you. This place is wildly, wildly, wildly overpopulated. I don't even know how to fix a place like this. I mean, you got to just catch as many as you can catch and remove them from the body of water. And even that would never be enough. Oh, snap. I flipped it up there and a little bass showed up out of the weeds. Come again. He's got it. <laughs> oh, I love that. He's got me down in the grass. Oh, man. He's got me down in the grass. He came up out of the weeds. And I saw him and I put my little horse fly in front of him and he just was like, nope, I'm not going to let that swim in front of me without eating it. Oh man, and not that big, but he put up a good fight. Golly. Oh man, I didn't realize he ate it that good. Holy smokes. Chunky little bass, healthy one for the ultralight. Good time. See you, bud. It's a pretty one. This place has a lot of fish. Not sure if you've gotten a really good look at this yet or not, but here you go. I'm just gonna pull on my line. Look at that. Yeah, definitely a fast action. And it takes a decent amount of resistance to cause it to flex. You know, when I really pull, there's the bulk of that flex is right towards the top. You know, it really does not flex down the blank. And that, my friends, is why I keep calling it a true fast. Okay, so I clearly got my fix of small fish, so I headed home and I'm cooking dinner on my smoker right now, so I'm in the garage. But before I close out today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Shimano Sensolite. Now, obviously, I've made it very clear that I like this rod, and I think for $50, it's really hard to beat. But why should you consider this rod? Well, I wanna say that this rod is not gonna be for everyone. This rod is probably not gonna be a good choice if you wanna do a lot of trout fishing. It's probably not gonna be the best choice if you're gonna throw a lot of treble hooked baits. But if you like jig fishing for pan fish, small bass, that sort of thing, I think this one's really, really hard to beat for $50. 
That being said, I would be crazy not to also mention the 13 Fishing Defy Silver. These rods are very, very similar. There's slight differences, but all in all, they're both really good options for 50 bucks. So if you're looking for a good, fast ultralight that you can do some jig fishing with, these are both awesome options. The 13 seems to have just a little bit more whip to it, so you might be able to get a little bit more casting distance on small stuff, whereas the Shimano Sense Light might just be a little bit faster. So you can make a choice depending on your own needs. Um, that being said, they have slightly different rod butts as well, but all in all, they feel very similar. They have a very similar balance, and I like both of them. Uh, one thing I also wanted to say is I really wish I could have got my hands on the six foot six model of this Sensolite because I have a feeling that'll be a dynamite rod. Um, if I ever have a chance to fish with that one, I probably will. Anyways, I'm going to start focusing on dinner for the night and uh, we'll catch you next time.